beginning of explanations uh, about this meeting. The president denying again that he knew about this meeting. When he first talked about uh, this meeting, he denied having anything to do with statements describing the meeting, describing the meeting in a misleading way as primarily about adoptions. Now it's shifted. Now the president's saying, wait, this was a meeting to get information uh, from our opponents, totally illegal. So that's one, one concession right there. And, and, and I do have to ask you about this because we haven't, I haven't had you on the program uh, for, for quite a while. And last July, a year ago, when I asked you if the president had anything to do with putting out a statement about this meeting at Trump's Tower, you said he wasn't involved in any way at all. Here's what you said. The president didn't sign off on, on anything. He was coming back from the G20. The, the statement that was released on Saturday was released by Donald Trump Jr., and I'm sure in consultation with his lawyers. The president wasn't involved in that. You said the president wasn't involved in any way at all. Later, Sarah Sanders changed that. She said, oh, yeah, the president weighed in but didn't dictate anything. This year, the president's legal team, including you, sent a memo to Robert Mueller saying this. You have received all the notes, communications, and testimony indicating that the president did dictate a short but accurate response to the New York Times article on behalf of his son. Uh, so why did you deny President yeah. Trump's involvement? When did you learn that the denial wasn't true? Well, let me tell you two things on that one. Number one, as you know, George, I was in the case at that point, what, a couple of weeks, and there was a lot of information that was gathering, and as my colleague Rudy Giuliani said, uh, I, had, I had bad information at that time. I made a mistake in my statement. I've talked about that before. Uh, that happens when you have cases like this. As far as when did we correct it, the important part is the information that we've shared with the Office of Special Counsel, I'm not going to get into the details, but we were very clear as to uh, the situation involving that trip uh, and, the, and the statements that were made to the New York Times. So I think it's very important to point out that in a situation like this, you have over time, facts develop. That's what uh, investigations do. I agreed to go on your network uh, and others, days within being uh, retained on this, and had a lot of information to process. I got that one uh, wrong. So what does that mean? Well, for the purpose of, again, an investigation, it doesn't mean illegality. It doesn't mean criminality. I think one of the things that we've learned here, George, after, what now, uh, over a year of this investigation, uh, is that there has been no evidence put forward by anyone at this point that we've seen. And we've seen 1.4 million documents. We've provided 32 witness interviews of any type of collusion on behalf of the president and the Russians. You know what we have seen, though? One of the most irregular investigations in U.S. history. Well, and I think well, if you're a you know, Republican, you've, you've talked Democrat, about the irregu or whatever, you've talked you, can't, about the well, you can't ignore it. I mean, yeah, no, I, I understand well, that. And I, gave you a chance to, and I gave you yeah. a chance to, yeah. to explain all the irregularities you thought sure. you saw in the investigation. I asked yeah. you about that. You said no collusion. Yep. At first, the White House said that there were no contacts with Russians. We now know there were at least... If the White House or anyone...